I'm going to show you how I repaired and upgraded not one, not two, but three used Kato in-scale locomotives that I recently purchased on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I know many of you struggle with concern about buying used locomotives, rolling stock, structures, other items on eBay or through other internet sources. There's concern about what the quality of the items will be, what their condition will be, and exactly what it'll take to get them up to snuff and ready to go on your layout. Well, I recently purchased three used Kato in-scale locomotives from a friend, a trusted source. Now, each of them needed a little bit of repair and they needed some upgrades. Of course, those things were disclosed and I knew exactly what I was buying. But today, I wanna to show you exactly how I made the repairs that needed to be made and the upgrades that I wanted in order to get these going on my layout. And so we're gonna go over to the workbench right now and I'll show you exactly how I got these ready to run. I recently purchased three lightly used Kato in-scale locomotives from a trusted source. They included two SD70 Max in BNSF H2 paint and one ES44AC Jivo in H3 paint. There was full disclosure as to the minor issues with these locomotives and the price was right so I bought them. The locomotives were missing some detail parts, including some grab irons, all of the snow plows, and some of the rear MU hoses. All three had original Kato couplers, which I wanted to upgrade to micro trains while I was working on them. Missing details and parts for Kato locomotives can be purchased direct from Kato. Simply go to katousa.com, then under the Purchase tab, click on Kato Direct Parts. If you have the exploded parts diagram that came with your locomotive, you can find the part numbers there and simply enter them into the search bar. If you don't have that diagram handy, you can simply find the specific locomotive under In Scale Products drop down menu in this case, and then click on the locomotive and click List Parts. There you will find a complete list of parts that are available for that locomotive that you can order. I ordered all of the parts that I needed for each of these locomotives. And I also ordered enough Micro Trains 2004 version short shank body mounted couplers to upgrade all three locomotives plus a few extras. I started my work on one of the SD70 Max. For this locomotive I needed to install the snow plow, rear MU hoses, the user applied front handrails, and upgrade the couplers. I began by removing the body shell and disassembling the handrail and pilot section from the main shell. You can use the drop box method for taking the shell off, but I found that these slipped off with relative ease. In fact, I didn't need to take the shell off the locomotive at all. I just thought that it might be easier to do the work if I did. I actually worked on the other locomotives with the shell and handrails intact and could have done everything with the shell on the chassis. The second step was to remove the Kato couplers. The couplers are held in place by a plastic E-shaped retaining clip. A brass strip behind the coupler serves as a centering spring. I simply used a small pair of needle nose pliers and pulled the spring piece out of its retainer. I then gently lifted the retainer straight up until it snapped out of place. This allowed the coupler to be easily removed. I keep these couplers as they can be weathered and make great broken couplers and knuckles for scrap piles or scrap loads. You need to keep the E-shaped retaining clips to hold the new couplers in place. The micro trains couplers slip into the pocket provided very snugly, they're actually a perfect fit. Align the hole in the coupler pocket with the hole in the body of the locomotive and then snap the retaining clip back into place. The clips will only go in one way. The top of the clip has a bit of a C shape and the points of the C should point into the center of the locomotive body. Next, I installed the snow plow. 
there are mounting holes in the front pilot for the snowplow. I realized after I worked on this first locomotive that it was easier to mount the snowplow after removing the cuddle couplers, but before installing the new ones, as the cement could be applied to the back of the mounting holes to glue the pilot in place, which was much easier than trying to glue it from the front without getting solvent cement in places that I didn't want it and marring the surface of the body shell. This is exactly what I did on the other two units. Next, I installed the rear MU hoses. These similarly have installation holes on the rear pilot. Getting them fitted into place was a bit of a trick, and once I had them in place, I had to carefully glue them in place with solvent cement in a couple of different places as I found that they fell out rather easily. With these details in place, I reassembled the locomotive shell and handrails. Again, as it turned out, disassembly wasn't really necessary. I installed the user-applied front handrails. I cut them from the sprue that they come on with my flush-cutting sprue tweezers and carefully cemented them into the mounting holes provided using an extra-fine microbrush and some solvent cement. And with that, the physical details were in place on this unit. I performed the same procedures on the second SD70 Mac, removing the Kato couplers, installing the snowplow and MU hoses before installing the new couplers this time so they could be cemented in place from behind, then installing the new couplers and the front handrails. With the parts in place, I reassembled the shells onto the chassis. The ES44AC needed a similar treatment, but it also had a couple of minor scuffs on the nose and one side of the radiator. I touched these up with some BNSF orange and steam power black paint. Coupler replacement went exactly as before. On this locomotive, the original snowplow had been broken off, leaving the original mounting pin still glued into one of the mounting holes. I used a small drill bit and a push drill to carefully re-drill the mounting hole in exactly the original spot, and then mounted the snowplow on and cemented it in place from behind. The MU hoses on the rear pilot of this locomotive were different from the ones on the SD70s. These had better fitting mounting pins and could be cemented from the back as the snowplow was. One trick with Kato locomotives. When reassembling the shell onto the chassis, the skirting on the shell often wants to hit the filler detail on the fuel tank. You'll need to use a small tool to push the skirting in to allow it to slip behind the detail for it to fit properly with the fuel tank. With everything back together, I used an NMRA gauge to check the wheel gauge on all the axles and a microtrain's height gauge to make sure the couplers were the proper height and the trip pins had the right amount of clearance. In this case, I had no issues with these standards but I have at times found wheels that are out of gauge that needed to be adjusted and couplers that require shimming to get them to the proper height. The front and rear handrails do not come properly painted on these or honestly on most locomotives out of the factory. The ES44 was the closest as the front handrails, the stanchions, and the safety chains were yellow. On the SD70s, they were all green. In fact, the stanchions and chains should be yellow, 
but the handrail should be painted safety white. I used a Tamiya bright yellow and Model Master's white paint to paint these details on these locomotives. I used an extra fine micro brush and worked carefully around all of the parts. I started with the ES44 as it would require the least paint. I kept a larger micro brush and some water at hand to clean up any errant paint and I needed it a few times through this process. The rails on the ES-44 came out beautifully. The SD-70s, on the other hand, were more of a challenge as the stanchions and safety chains needed to be painted yellow as well. I painted the white safety rails first as I had done on the ES44. With a little practice and some patience, this part of the process is not terribly difficult. The yellow paint started off easily enough as I painted the main parts of the stanchions and safety chains. Painting the detail around the ditch lights, however, proved to be a real challenge. I ended up using an 18 aught paintbrush to carefully work around all of the detail parts without painting the lenses on the ditch lights or the platforms around the details. The rear stanchions were not quite as difficult as I didn't have the ditch light detail to work around. Once I got them painted, I thought they looked pretty good. And with that, the detailing of these locomotives is complete. I do plan some other upgrades on these engines, but I'll tell you about that in the closing of this video. I think these look fantastic and will make welcome additions to the locomotive fleet on my layout. So that's got these locomotives in great physical condition ready to go on the layout. Now the couplers will work well with all of my other micro trains and similar couplers and all of the detail parts are on there to make these locomotives look consistently well detailed uh, as they run alongside the other locomotives that are on my layout. Of course, I run a DCC layout, so the one thing that is still missing is these locomotives each need to be upgraded to DCC decoders. Well, that's going to be the subject of another video that will be coming up very soon, as I'm going to be installing three different DCC decoders in these three locomotives, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do each one of them. That's going to include one simple motor decoder and two different sound decoders, one of which is going to require some milling and modification to the frame in order to make the speaker fit, That'll be something that'll be interesting to some of you, so you'll want to tune in for that coming up in just a few weeks. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more great modeling videos that I know you're going to enjoy as well. I hope you'll check them out. Also, be sure and take a look at the description down below where you're going to find my new promo code for Micromark, and that can save you 10% on all regularly priced items at micromark.com. There are some exceptions, but you can read about those in the description. Also in the description, you'll find a link to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Patreon page and links where you can connect with me on social media. Well, I hope you'll join me again each Tuesday as I bring you more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?